When dealing with four color process images, setting up your workspace is extremely important. If your computer can't read the colors correctly, you're not going to be able to output films for correct four color process printing. Whether we're using Adobe Photoshop or CorelDRAW or CorelDRAW Photo Paint, we have to set up our color space correctly. If we use the standard defaults set in the program, when we go to our CMYK separation, and to make a CMYK separation is basically very easy. You're just changing the mode from RGB, which most images are open up in, to CMYK. Now, to start out with your images, you always want to open them up and work with them in RGB and change them to CMYK only as you're ready to separate them. But let me demonstrate. Right now we're in default settings in Photoshop. And I can tell that by if I go to my edit and my color settings, I can actually see my monitor or my default color settings. Typically it's going to be monitor RGB US web coded swap. Um, as far as your CMYK readings. Now these two readings right here, your working spaces, is how your image is going to be opened up and then separated. So using the correct ones, as we'll explain later, is very important. When you screen print CMYK, you definitely need to limit the ink saturation. So if I separate this into CMYK, I can take a look right now, my yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. If we take a look at these, we can actually see the color values by hovering our mouse over and looking up in the right hand corner and looking at our image info. Right here we see on the magenta channel, let's use our cursor, right here we have 99-100% magenta. We take a look at the cyan channel, we have 100% cyan. Well right here we're supposed to have gradients. If we take a look at the full color image, you can see there's tonal ranges in here. We wouldn't be able to see those because we're pretty much printing spot color on top of spot color. And the reason that is, is because of how saturated the separation was due to the default settings in Photoshop. So we took this back into RGB mode and let's explain how to load custom photo settings. Now depending on what your ink manufacturer is, we're using International Coatings Pro Bright series of inks, which are one of the best four color process inks on the market. Your ink manufacturer is going to have specific color values built for their inks in Adobe Photoshop, which you can load into the system by doing this. So, right now, this is the CMYK settings for the International Coatings Pro Bright series of inks. Pretty much simple, just following these steps. So, we go to Settings, we go to Custom Settings, change that to Custom, and we go to custom CMYK and we're going to change this to custom and this is going to bring up our lab values so right here we select lab coordinates and then you would plug in all of these numbers right here as if you see this looks pretty much the same as this right here we just plug in these numbers starting with um, 40.1 negative 8.4 and so on and so forth now the great news is, is you don't have to worry about this because we've already done it for you on our website, SilverScreenSupplies.com, under the Four Color Process Ink page, you can download these settings. They're called the Rounded IC ProBright 305 settings, meaning that these are the ProBright inks printed through 305 mesh screens. Also, you can download the Rounded Standard CMYK ink settings, which you can also use for other CMYK inks. My favorite and what we typically are going to be using, even in this video throughout, is the IC ProBright series printing through 305 mesh screens. All you have to do is download this file. Save it somewhere on your desktop, unzip it, and then you just browse to it in your Photoshop menu. So all you have to do once again is go to load, browse to the settings, and then choose your correct setting to run an IC ProBright series through 305 mesh screens. And take a look how the, this changes once I, once I load this in. This brightens up. Now, important settings to notice here, Apple RGB is our default RGB setting and then our custom CMYK setting. So our Apple RGB setting is how it actually reads RGB images in Photoshop. I would recommend keeping this setting loaded at all times when you're working with four color process images. Remember, even when you're editing these four color process images to correctly prepare them for the separation, you need to do it in RGB mode and you want to use the correct color profile which is the Apple RGB color profile. So have these color profiles loaded and ready to go even when you're preparing in RGB. Now let's take a look at the CMYK separation. So we go to mode and then change that to CMYK. Look how much different it looks. Whereas before it was very saturated, now this ink is much more limited. And for a correct print, especially through a 305 mesh screen, you can't print too much ink on top of too much other ink. 
Otherwise, the image just muddies out and you lose all your detail. It becomes way too saturated. If we tried to print the previous separation that we did in our default color settings, it would be a disaster and it would be very hard to get a good looking image. This is going to be much easier starting point. And typically, from here, you don't even have to make adjustments. However, if you would like to make more adjustments in Photoshop, you typically highlight the channel you want to adjust, go to your image, and then your adjustments, and choose a curve. We're highlighting the magenta channel, and from here we can add or take back or limit the magenta channel. So you can make further adjustments and see those changes on screen. As long as your image is prepared properly and you use these custom color settings in Photoshop or any Adobe product, it will separate accordingly. You can load these same color settings into Illustrator to add vector text below your images. Now you can also load, because, because Adobe reads each other, you can also load these Adobe CSF files into Adobe Illustrator so that your Illustrator for color process separations will also read correctly. If you're a CorelDRAW user, setting up your color settings are a little bit more difficult. So check out this tutorial for Corel Photo Paint and CorelDRAW.